Hi guys, so let's now check out externalities and efficiency. Okay, when it comes to externalities, we're dealing with a situation where there is some transaction, it may be consumption, it may be uh, production taking place. Uh, now, that consumption or production then leads to external costs or benefits which are borne upon society. In this lesson, we're going to focus on external production externalities. Great example is, of course, pollution. So that could be air pollution, it could be noise pollution, it could be light pollution, it could be blight. Okay, that is the eyesore that is created by a big factory spewing loads of uh, loads of uh, smoke up into the environment and so on. So here we go. Externalities exist when there is a difference between private costs and benefits and social costs and benefits. Okay, now we'll see this in, in, uh, in a uh, very clear example in a diagram in just a moment for a negative production externality. From that, def that term, we can actually see that something negative is happening to society as a result of production okay, taking place. And so there is an external cost in this case uh, due because it's a negative, it's not a benefit, okay? Right, so when it comes to the actual marginal cost, we need to understand these diagrams before we actually look at them in detail. The cost of producing one more unit of output, of course. Now, initially, uh, marginal costs of production can, of course, fall before then rising, and they can end up looking a little like hockey stick or, uh, yeah, uh, an upward sloping Nike swoosh or something like that. Okay, so we can see that there, that they are U-shaped. Now, initially, the actual uh, cost of production, the marginal cost of production will uh, decrease as you increase output. If you cook uh, one, or bake rather, uh, one loaf of bread, then okay, fine, but if you bake two loaves of bread, you've only got to put the oven on once, of course, and there may well be a benefit in terms of actually doing so. You may experience lower marginal costs of production. Okay, now, um, in thereafter, of course, that rate will rise as you need to buy more and more ingredients and perhaps you need laborers, etc. Right, then we've got marginal benefit. Let's just label that before we move on. So we've got our marginal cost. Our marginal benefit, meanwhile, is downward sloping. So it's downward sloping, so it will look something like this. There it is, okay? Now, that's our circumstance that we have here so far. Marginal benefit, marginal cost. Now, the issue is that we uh, currently don't have a difference between these marginal costs and marginal benefits. But if we go back to this term and just consider that we have a negative production externality, this really implies this sort of situation, okay? The, the marginal social cost is greater, is higher than the marginal private cost. So when it comes to the actual price or costs that are actually imposed, we can expect to see the marginal uh, social cost above the marginal private cost, of course. So we can see that here. Now, we've got a clear vertical distance here. And that vertical distance reflects the size of the externality, the external cost, which is imposed upon society. So we've got two points of output. Uh, we can also identify, we've got this one. Let's label that up first. I'm going to label that Q1. Meanwhile, we've got this point here. And let's label that Q star. Okay, so let's label up our price points, our corresponding price points. So we've got P star and then we've got P1 here. So what can we also determine from this? Well, we can see at Q1 that there is an additional cost. Output is currently at Q1. Society would prefer it to be a Q star. That is, after all, where the marginal benefit equals the marginal social cost, the true cost of actually producing this economic output. But for the firm, of course, they're going to want to actually increase the output of this good if they want to take more market share and re more revenue and so on. So therefore, what we can see is that at this point, the external cost that is imposed upon society is that vertical distance there. That is our external cost right there. So uh, there's our external cost. Meanwhile, our social optimum the allocatively efficient level of output 
is here. So this is our allocatively efficient level of output, but unfortunately we are not yet there. Okay, right, so there it is so far, so far so good. Now the next thing to actually think about is of course exploring this concept of efficiency in a bit more detail. Now, if you actually imagine the consumer and the producer surplus, you can see the producer has um, managed to actually maximize their benefits here. And we can see that against their marginal cost curve, and then the marginal benefit and the price point. There is our uh, societal optimal point, a Q star, P star. So what we can see at the moment is that we have overproduction. This good is overproduced in terms of what society thinks about it. And moreover, it's actually underpriced because it doesn't reflect the true cost borne upon society. Now, as a direct consequence of that, we have an area of deadweight economic loss. Area of deadweight economic loss reflected by this, this triangle here where we've got the external cost um, which represents all of that area and then when we go back to our social optimum P star and Q star we can see that we have that area of dead weight economic loss. Let's just label that up. Now that is a loss of societal output because it means that we are now facing a situation of uh, pollution, there's external costs that are imposed upon society and this is not good news. We want to restrict the economic output to this level. The question is next, how do you actually go about doing that? Right, great stuff guys, we'll leave that there for today.